Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, let's begin. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaktur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I'm sharing the screen. Can everyone see the PowerPoint? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so we're going on to day lesson two. We're still dealing with the first chapter, which was called Vishada Yoga. So today we want to finish the first chapter. Just to re review the points we covered in the previous class, we spoke about the liberal nature of brahmanas, right? Who was the example of a liberal brahmana? Dronacharya. Dronacharya, right. And then we spoke about Duryodhana's diplomacy, how he was very careful to encourage his army and to keep nice relationships with all of his Maharatis. And then also Arjuna having Hanuman on the flag, praying to the previous Acharyas, the mood of getting the mercy of the previous Acharyas. But then. We spoke about Prabhupada's statement regarding Vaishnavas and violence and how we have to understand this statement in the proper manner. So the main points, the main points in the first chapter begins with Dhritarashtra's doubts. What was his doubt? His doubt was, they may not fight, they may make peace. He didn't want that, he wanted that his sons would fight. So he was, he was inquiring from Sanjay, what did they do? And then Dur Duryodhana's diplomacy, the signs of victory for the Pandavas. What were some of the signs of victory for the Pandavas? Chariot. On sale. Flag. The Hanuman on the flag. Hanuman on the flag. The, invin the indestructible chariot of Arjuna. And Krishna on their side. Lord Krishna's on their side. Huh? In the and Krishna was their side, and Krishna was is Madhav, that is, uh, you know, has been the goddess of fortune. So, goddess of fortune is also on the side of Pandavas. Yes. That is also the side of Pandavas victory. Right. Good. One. Any more? The conchals. Yes, the, the conch shells, yeah, the conch shells, the transcendental vibration of the conch shells. And the place where it was fought, like Kurukshetra. Like and Kurukshetra, the... because it's a Dharmakshetra. So it's certainly favorable for the Pandavas. All right, so those were all different signs of victory for the Pandavas. And then we also heard in the last class, how Lord Krishna is Bhakta Vatsal, right? Lord Krishna is controlled by the pure love of his devotees. Although Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and controls everyone, he's the Param Ishwara, but he comes into the battlefield as the, the servant of Arjuna, and Arjuna is ordering him 
take my chariot into the middle of the battlefield. I want to see who is here. So Lord Krishna comes as a servant under the orders of Arjuna di driving the chariot. So that is the beauty of Krishna, how he reciprocates with the pure love of his devotees. So we are going to hear now also about Arjuna's four reasons for not fighting. Arjuna's confused about what to do in the battlefield, should he fight or not. So we'll go, we'll go, we're going to hear some of the different reasons. All right. First of all, mention here. Uh, Lord Krishna, oh sorry, Lord Krishna is Rishikesha, meaning, Rishikesh means? Master of the senses. Yes? Master of the senses. Master of the senses. Master of the senses. Master of the senses, or the proprietor of the senses. So he's come into the middle, come with Arjuna into the midst of the battlefield under the direction of Arjuna. Although Lord Krishna is Rishikesh, he's controlling everyone. Someone could just read text number 24 for me. Right, um, Lord Krishna is could you read the English, please? Yes. Sanjaya said, O descendant of Bharata, having thus been addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna drew up the fine chariot in the midst of the armies of both parties. Okay. So here you can see in the picture, you can see the illustration, Lord Krishna, in the midst of the two. Oh, let's see. Hare Krishna. All right, someone like to read the slide? In this verse, Arjuna is referred to as Gura Kesha. Guraka means sleep, and one who confers sleep is called Gura Kesha. Sleep also means ignorance. So Arjuna conferred both sleep and ignorance because of his friendship with Krishna. As a great devotee of Krishna, he could not forget Krishna even for a moment. Keep breathing. Because that is the nature of a devotee. Either in working or in sleep, a devotee of the Lord can never be free from thinking of Krishna's name, form, qualities, and pastimes. Thus, a devotee of Krishna can conquer both sleep and ignorance simply by thinking of Krishna constantly. 1.24 per pot. Okay. So, good Akesha. Are you able, how are you doing? A conquering sleep? Are you working on it? Conquering sleep? How much do you sleep every day? Yes, yes, Madhiji, how much do you sleep every day? Four to five hours. Oh, very good. Only four or five hours a day, that's very good. Five hours per day, yeah. Okay, very good. Not, not bad. Prabhupada said you can sleep six hours a day. Anyway, you're only sleeping five hours a day, so you're conquering sleep. Are you also conquering ignorance? You're trying, right? Because you're coming in the Bhakti Shastri course. So you, we hope it will help you to conquer over ignorance. And how does Arjuna conquer sleep and ignorance? He conquers it because of his friendship with Lord Krishna. The Pandavas, in, in particularly Arjuna, had so much deep, intimate friendship with Lord Krishna. They were not 
doing much in the way of sadhana, but they were deeply attached to Krishna. They just wanted to be with Krishna. They liked so much to be with Krishna, to be near to Krishna, and to see Krishna. And they enjoyed that relationship which they had as intimate friends with Krishna. So Prabhupada writes how the devotee can never be free from thinking of Krishna. So, of course, that's the, the main principle in Krishna consciousness. Always remember Krishna and never forget him at any time. So if we're able to constantly think of Krishna, then we can conquer over both sleep and ignorance. So we hope we can do that. So good Akesha. And then Bhishma Drona Pramukata. In front of both Bhishma and Drona. Right? Lord Krishna had been instructed by Arjuna to bring the chariot into the middle of the battlefield. But when Lord Krishna drove the chariot into the middle of the battlefield, it just so happened that their chariot was directly in front of the chariots of Bhishma and Drona. And they could see these two, pe these two people, both Bhishma and Drona, who were so dear to Arjuna who were so much loved and respected by Arjuna, they were right in front of him. So in this way, Arjuna, his mind became bewildered. Hmm? Lord Krishna turns to Arjuna and said, Just behold, just behold the Kurus. Paishyaitan samavetan kurun iti. Okay, so they were right in front of Bhishma and Drona. So Lord Krishna is turning to Arjuna and saying, There they are, Arjuna, there's the Kurus. And he sees Bhishma and Drona. So in this way, Arjuna's mind was reeling. Oh, what to do? How can I fight people like Bhishma and Drona? Just behold the Kurus. The Pandavas are also Kurus, but here, of course, it's Dhritarashtra's sons are the Kurus. And the Pandavas are like some, some other family. Actually, they're all Kurus. So Prabhupada's purport, Krishna never expected such things from the son of his aunt Prita. The mind of Arjuna was thus predicted by the Lord in friendly joking. Lord Krishna is the super soul in the heart of all living entities, so he could understand the thinking of Arjuna. So Lord Krishna is joking with Arjuna. He turns to him and said, There they are, Arjuna, there's the Kurus, they're the ones. And Arjuna can just see Bhishma, Drona, and he thinks, oh no. Not only does he just see Bhishma and Drona, you can see text 26 mentions, there Arjuna could see within the midst the armies of both parties, his fathers, grandfathers, teachers, uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons, friends, fathers-in-law, well-wishers, right? So, who were, who were the fathers? It mentions his fathers. Who were they? Fathers. Hmm? Do you know his father-in-law? Bhuri Bhurishrava. Bhuri only one father? We've got plural, his fathers. Who could he see? 
Who were the grand? Huh? Drupad. Drupad. Sorry? Drupad. Maharaj Drupad. Yeah, Prabhupada's well, it, it's not in Prabhupada's purport, but if you look in Surrender Unto Me, do you have that book, Surrender Unto Me? If you look in the purport there, Burijan Prabhu has listed the identities of these different people. Who were the grandfathers? Vishwaptama. Bhishma, and who else? Somadatta. Somadatta. Who were the teachers? Right, yes, and the maternal uncles, maternal uncles from the mother's side, from Kunti's side, uncles. Uh, Shakuni, Sanya, and Sakuni. Sanya. Okay. And brothers? Brothers are all the hundred. All the Kauravas. Okay. And sons? Um, Lakshman. Lakshman. And others who are the sons of Kauravas. Uh -huh. And grandsons? The uh, hmm. Friends. Friends like Ashwadhamma. Like who? Ashwadhamma and others. Ashwadhamma. Oh. Fathers in law. That would be, who's the father-in-law from Drup Drupadi, Drupadi's father? Drupada. Drupada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, he is looking at the Kauravas army right now. Huh? Is it like he is looking at both the parties or no? Yeah, he's looking at both parties, yeah. Yeah, and this. Hmm. All right, and well wishers. So you can get the exact information if you look in Surrender Unto Me. Barijan Prabhu has given all that. Uh, sorry, Maharaj, sorry to interrupt. Where exactly did you say in uh, Surrender Unto Me? I just uh, opened it. Yeah, it, 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 in this text where they're talking about these different people. Text number 26. Okay, but I'm seeing almost the same purport. Um, yeah? Yeah, I, I'm seeing the same purport only, Maharaj. That's why I'm checking where exactly uh, do I look for it. As far as I remember, it's there in the first chapter in, in relation to this text where, it, where Arjuna could see these different people. And, uh, but, I, I and, would put it in chat, Maharaj, here. Uh, uh, yeah, I will put it here in this chat and then in Telegram also. Okay. Our only vote is to see that. Yeah, this is the one. You found it, did you, Prabhu? Yes, yes, Mara, yes, Mara. I found it and then I put it in this chat. Itself. Actually, for this verse, Burjan Prabhu is repeating Prabhupada's purport itself. Yeah, that's Whatever. what I'm seeing. Uh, so. Those who are using Vedavis, you have the links to surrender unto me with the purport. Yeah, I'm sure this. Correct. Yes, Maharaj, we can go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so Arjuna's four reasons for not fighting here. First of all, compassion. Text 27, 28, 29. 
Someone like to read the translation, please, the English translation of 27, 28, 29. When the son of Kunti, Arjuna, saw all these different grades of friends and relatives, he became overwhelmed with compassion and spoke thus. Okay, so compassion is directly mentioned there in text number 27. Yeah, keep reading. 28. Uh, Text 28 translation. Arjuna said, My dear Krishna, seeing my friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit, I feel the limbs of my body quivering and my mouth drying out. And 29? Text 29 translation. My whole body is trembling, my hair is standing on end, my bow, the mirror is slipping from my hand. And my skin is burning. Okay. All right. So Prabhupada points out, of course, Arjuna is not cowardly, but he's overwhelmed by compassion, his feeling for others. And that compassion was directly mentioned there in text 27. So we give that as the first reason for Arjuna not wanting to fight. And then go ahead, then we come to the second one, which is enjoyment. And that's mentioned in this section 30 up to 35. Someone else like to read for us text number 30, translation? I am now able to stand here. I'm sorry, I'm now unable to stand here any longer. I am forgetting myself and my mind is really gone. I see only causes of misfortune, O oh, Krishna, killer of the Keshi demon. Yeah, keep going. I do not see how any good can come from killing my kinsman in this battle, nor can I see my dear Krishna desire any subsequent victory, kingdom or happiness. O Govinda, of what avail to us are a kingdom, happiness, <clears throat> or even life itself, when all those for whom we may desire them are not arrayed, are now arrayed on this battlefield? O Madhusudan, when teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, maternal uncles, father-in-law, grandsons, brother-in-law, and other relatives are free to give up their lives and properties and are standing before me why should i wish to kill them even though they might otherwise kill me O oh, maintainer of all living entities i am not prepared to fight with them even in exchange for the three words let alone this earth what pleasure will we derive from killing the sons of the rashtra Krishna. thank you for so, you can see there, particularly in the final verse, which we re just read, Arjuna is saying, what pleasure can we derive? In other words, I won't get any enjoyment. I'm not going to get any pleasure from it. So, why should I do it? So, Arjuna is saying, there's no enjoyment there. Usually, the impetus for all action is that you'll get certain pleasure, certain enjoyment from it. But if you're not going to get any enjoyment out of it, why should we bother to do it? So this, this is Arjuna's thinking. This is one of his reasons for not wanting to fight. And then the next reason, third reason, sinful reactions. Text number 36. Someone please read translation. Someone who hasn't read. Sin will overcome us if we slay such aggressors. Therefore, it is not proper for us to kill the sons of the Rastra and What should we mean for Krishna, husband of the goddess of fortune? How could we be happy by killing our own kinsmen? Sin will overcome us, yes. So Arjuna is certainly worried about sinful reactions. So this is clearly mentioned in text 36. 
Can we read also 43, 44? O oh Krishna, maintainer of the people, I have heard by disciplic, disciplic succession that those whose family traditions are destroyed dwell always in hell. 44. Yeah. Alas, how strange it is that we are preparing to commit greatly sinful acts. Driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness, we are intent on killing our own kinsmen. Okay, so Arjuna again understand thinking that this fight that we're prepared to do sinful acts. Arjuna is considering like that, that this is sinful. What is, he's not considering it that that's his duty. He thinks that it's going to be very sinful. And then number five from second chapter. Yes. It would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers, even though desiring worldly gains. They are spurious. If they are killed, everything we we enjoy will be tinted with blood. Okay. So sinful reactions is another reason for Arjuna not wanting to fight. And devotees, as devotees, we are also very careful to avoid sinful reactions. We certainly are very conscious about doing something which we know to be sinful because we know there'll be some reactions which will greatly suffer, uh, cause us a lot of disturbance in our life. So devotees are very careful, very conscious not to do anything sinful. And the fourth reason, we have the destruction of the dynasty. 37 to 43. So the fourth reason, we'll be looking at that in some more detail in just a minute. Let's, uh, and would someone just read 37 maybe? Although these men, they have quarreling with friends, why should we? Who can see the crime in destroying a family engaged in these acts of sin? Okay, thank you. Yes? So Arjuna is worried about destroying the family. Certainly. Good reasons. When we hear about them, we, we would be inclined to agree that these are all valid reasons. And Lord Krishna has certainly been listening to them. And he's going to answer to each of these four reasons in his reply once he begins speaking. You will, we will hear how Lord Krishna counters each of the four reasons which Arjuna has for not fighting. So first of all, co compassion. Uh, now, compassion is a good quality. Certainly, as devotees, we do want to be compassionate. Right? We speak about uh, full of compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. So there's no fault in being compassionate. But there's different levels of compassion. You see, compassion can be based on the body and compassion can also be based on the soul. So we want to understand what is actual valuable compassion, what is real compassion. That is actually compassion, not just simply for the body, but for the soul. So the words there, kripaya, paraya vishto, kripaya. Kripaya meaning what? Yes. Yes, Kripaya. Kripaya means compassion. Right. Kripaya. Great compassion. By compassion. Okay. And Paraya Vishto? Uh, uh, 
Overwhelmed. Avishta is overwhelmed. So Arjuna became overwhelmed with a high-grade compassion. Yes, but Arjuna's compassion is based on the body, we will hear. His compassion is not actually the kind of compassion which we would encourage devotees. We don't want to just be compassionate for the body, but we want to think of the soul, the benefit of the soul. So com compassion is something which is often misunderstood. You know, the beggar comes and asks you for money, and, you, and, and somebody may say, Oh, give him a donation. Come on, you've got money. Give him some donation. And you may give the person some money, and then the person takes your money and goes and buys alcohol with it, or goes and gets more drugs for himself. So that kind of compassion, that was foolish. It was wrong. It was misplaced. We want to understand what is the proper use of compassion. Now, Arjuna is a Kshatriya. Is that a quality of Kshatriyas, to be compassionate? No, Guru Maharaj. Huh? No. No. Who do we expect to be compassionate? Ramana. Yes, devotees are supposed to be the topmost brahmanas, right? The brahmanas, they're meant to be compassionate. But kshatriyas generally are not known to be very compassionate. Some may be, maybe some special kshatriyas who are great devotees, but in general it's not a quality of the kshatriya. Arjuna has become a little confused about things. <laughs> so, compassion. How, how, if it's used in the proper way, it's good. But often compassion is used simply for the body, which is useless. Prabhupada explains, the other side, Duryodhan, why he did not think in that way? Why Arjuna is thinking? Because he is devotee. That is the difference. A devotee thinks like that. A devotee does not like to kill anyone, even an ant. So many atrocities were done to him. Still, when the question of killing came, he was not very happy. No, this is Vaishnava. He is ready to excuse even the greatest enemy. From Prabhupada's lecture in London in 1973 on Bhagavad Gita, first chapter, verses 26 and 27. So Prabhupada is describing the compassion of a devotee that he is ready to excuse even the greatest enemy. Can we think of some examples? Who did who was given who was forgiven for sinful things? Jagaya Maharaj. Okay. Yes, Jagai and Madhai were sinful. They came and surrendered. Lord Nichananda accepted them. Anybody else? Chankasi. Chankasi, yes. Ashwatama. 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 What did 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 he? <laughs> no, he's not. I don't think he was. Uh, I don't think he. he he asked. 
he was not killed, but he was punished. Any other examples? That is, even stringing priests are not punished for singing Maharaj Parikshita. I'm sorry, Prabhu, your voice is not clear. Uh, can you hear Maharaj? Yes. Even Shringi, who cursed uh, Maharaj Parikshit, he did not retaliate actually, he left it as such. Yes, Shringi, uh, well, he never felt guilty about doing anything. His father felt bad about what his son had done, but we don't read anywhere that Shringi felt sorry for what he'd done. <laughs> She was inappropriate by naming Advaita Acharya as Dvaita because he was separating the families. Oh, no. Uh -huh. You're talking. Gopal Chappal. Gopal Chappal. <laughs> All right, we're hearing many from Chaitanya Leela. A lot more mercy comes in Chaitanya Leela. In Krishna Leela, the demons were killed. I was thinking... Haridas Thakur. Huh? Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur. Was Indra uh, forgiven by Prithu Maharaj for stealing the horse? I'm sorry, Prabhu. You, could you speak up? Was Indra forgiven by Prithu Maharaj for stealing the horse of the Ashwamedha sacrifice? No, <laughs> Indra. The, of course, Indra is the king of heaven, so <laughs> they had to tolerate his misdeeds. Anyway, the point is that the behavior of a devotee, that generally devotees, they're compassionate, they don't like to kill anyone. You see Prahlad Maharaj's ex uh, example, Maharaj, yes. how he forgives his father. 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 Yes, Prahlad Maharaj certainly is ready to forgive his father. He said, don't let my father go to hell. That was Prahlad's prayer. That's a nice example. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes. Although Haranya Kashipu had tried to k kill Prahlad, but Prahlad didn't consider him to be the enemy. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, can it be um, Ambarish Maharaj also tolerated Durvasa Muni? Yes, Ambarish also tolerated Durvasa Muni. So he's ready to forgive them. So this. I mean, if you take the Sita actually, the uh, Sita oh. I mean, assistant who are there. Uh, she told Anumar not to kill them. We couldn't hear what you... I couldn't hear what you said, Prabhu, very well. I just heard the last part. Yeah, I mean, Sita said... Sita Devi said not to kill the uh, Asura attendants, right? In Ashokvana, when Hanuman came there. Uh-huh. So they were torturing her, right? Except for Vijata, who is Vivishna's daughter. Okay. Yeah, and we have the example of Lord, Lord Ramachandra who said that anyone who comes to me and uh, takes shelter, I will immediately, I will, even one time who utters my name, I will immediately give them shelter. So when Vibhishan came there, Hanuman didn't, he was a reluctant, he was thinking, oh, this is Ravana, Ravana's brother. Or, there was some reluctance from some of the people around Lord Ramachandra. But Lord Ramachandra said, no, anyone who comes, take shelter of me. I can never give them up. I have to accept them. He's ready to excuse them, whoever they were. Maya demon. What demon? Um, Maya, they are demon who created the assembly hall eventually, when he surrendered to Arjun. Maya Dhanava? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Uh -huh. He was forgiven by Arjun. Okay.
Draupadi forgave, wanted to forgive uh, Ashwatthama in spite of him killing all his children. Who was this? Draupadi wanted to forgive Ashwatthama because she didn't want Kripacharya's sister to go through the same pain that she has gone through. That's right. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. okay, we gotta go ahead. Let's see what else Prabhupada has to say. Okay, Arjuna's Arjuna Uvacha, reasons for not to fight. Siddhanti Mam Gatrani. I feel the limbs of my body quivering. Arjuna's confused. The limbs of his body quivering. Now that's an unusual thing for a great Kshatriya to feel the bodily limbs quivering. Generally it would be out of some kind of fear, but Arjuna is not cowardly. And then Mukam Chapari Shushyati, the mouth drying up to a greater degree. Arjuna is speaking about his bodily condition, his physical condition. So he is describing that he doesn't feel confident about taking part in this battle. Oh. Okay, so that's text number 28 describing these things. Arjuna's how he's quite disturbed by the whole situation coming there on the battlefield. And that's unusual for someone like Arjuna, who's such a great soul, who is so he's a Maharati and he's not at all afraid of anything. But somehow or other he's come into this condition. So Prabhupada writes here, someone like to read, Dehatma Buddhi Swajanam. So Arjuna was not a coward. He was a competent warrior. But still, Dehatma Buddhi, the bodily concept of life is so strong that Arjuna admits, Drishtvatu Swajanam Krishna, Bhagavad Gita 1.28. My dear Krishna, I have to kill my own men. What is that own men? Own men means this bodily relationship. Why others are not own men? Everyone is own men because everyone is Krishna's son. So when one becomes Krishna conscious, he can see everyone own men. And when he is not Krishna conscious, he simply sees own men where there is bodily relationship. This is the defect. Thank no. you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaji. Yes. So explained very clearly here, Arjuna's problem, the bodily concept of life, bodily relationships. And we hear this a lot in Krishna consciousness, you know. People are always saying, how I can make my mother a devotee or how can I get my husband to become a devotee like this, you know. The bodily relationships are very strong. And so here we see also on the battlefield, Arjuna also talking about uh, our own man. Who is our own man? We're all sons of the one father, sons of Krishna. So we have to be very conscious not to be overwhelmed by this bodily concept of life, the bodily relationship. That is not Krishna consciousness. Yeah. So this is, this is Arjuna's defect here. This was, this was Prabhupada's lecture in London, first chapter 26 to 29. I remember we just got Bhaktivedanta Manor at that time. So when we got Bhaktivedanta Manor, Prabhupada came to stay there for some time and he began lecturing on the Bhagavad Gita right from the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita. And he gave classes on all the first and second chapter. 
verse by verse. Every evening he would speak. And he, he never did that any other place, so it was, it was very fortunate. All right, so we're speaking about compassion and how much compassion is so much often misplaced on the body rather than on the soul. So compassion for the soul is what's required, not just compassion for the body. We'll go on to the next reason, enjoyment. Nimitani chapashyami vipar itani. Envisioned only painful reverses in the battlefield. He would not be happy even by gaining victory over the foe. I think you might have to mute everyone, Prabhu. Yeah, Maharaj, I will mute everyone and then you can unmute. Yeah. All right, so we've highlighted this word happy because generally we're thinking what will make me happy? If we, if we think it's not going to make me happy, we won't do it. He would not be happy even by gaining victory over the foe. Arjuna is thinking, I, I won't be happy even if I win the battle. If you lose the battle, of course you could understand you're not happy, but Arjuna is saying, even if I win the battle, I won't be happy. So that's something very strange. So Arjuna is considering, what's the point to fight? I won't enjoy. But Arjuna is fortunate because he has Lord Krishna with him and he addresses Lord Krishna as Keshava. Keshava Prabhupada translates here Keshava in this time, the killer of the demon Keshi. It's unusual, uh, uh, Keshava is sometimes translated as one who has long black hair, but here is, is Keshava is the killer of the Keshi demon. It's an unusual translation of Keshi. All right, going ahead to text number 31. Natashreyo nipashyami. I do not foresee how any good can come. Shreyo, shreya, shreya. Right? There's two words there's shreyas and prayas. So shreyas, meaning actually it means spiritual good, not just simply material good, but spiritual good. So the word is properly used. I do not see how any good can come. Arjuna is thinking like that, that this is a reason for not fighting. If Krishna says, can't you see, I am on your side? So Lord Krishna is speaking, is encouraging Arjuna that you don't have to worry, I'm on your side, everything will be okay. Nakangshe vijayam krishna na cha rajyam sukhani cha. Text number 31. Someone read the translation, text number 31. Andre Prabhu, uh, Guru Maharaj. I do not How see any good how can come from giving my own kinsmen its bad? Nor can I, my dear Krishna, desire any subsequent victory, kingdom or happiness. Mm. Nor can I desire any kingdom or happiness. So 
subsequent victory, kingdom or happiness. Rajyam, the kingdom, the Sukhani, happiness. So Arjuna is thinking, what's the good? You know, it's not, there's no reason to fight. There's no enjoyment. Nothing good going to come of it. Why I should bother? Prabhupada explains, so there are two things, Shreyas and Preyas. Here Arjuna is speaking of Shreyas. Shreyas means ultimate good, and prayas means immediately palatable. So here the problem is, what is shreyas? What is ultimate good? That is mistaken here. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita is required. Yes, again, we have to understand what is actually the good, what is the real good. I remember in Calcutta, there was one sari shop, it was called Shreyas. <laughs> I thought it was very interesting, the man used the word Shreyas for his sari shop. So, the two words, Shreyas and Priyas. Shreyas meaning really good for our spiritual benefit. And Shreyas is just immediately, it appears to be good, but doesn't last very long. So people are often confused, they don't think about what is really for the ultimate good. We should understand clearly what is Shreyas and what is Preyas. Here's a quote from Prabhupada's lecture on the 31st verse of text of chapter 1. So Prabhupada said, He is thinking that Krishna is not so important. My family is important. My family. Oh, we hear this so much. It's so common. It's so common. Devotees think like this. The bodily concept. We come to Krishna consciousness and we want to bring the whole family with us. And it's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. So Prabhupada said, although he is devotee, therefore Kanista Adhikari, in the lower stage of devotee, in the lower stage of devotion, one may be interested in Krishna consciousness. But his real interest is how to improve this material life. They are thinking, I can bring Krishna in the midst of my family, provided Krishna helps me to enjoy this material life. So the, the, you can see the condition, the, the, the thinking of the materialistic devotee. Yeah, I can bring Krishna to, into my family. But Krishna has to help me enjoy material life. So, this is the thinking of the neophyte devotee. They're devotee, but they're in very much in the bodily concept of life. They have not understood what is real devotion. The devotion to Krishna shouldn't be dependent on any conditions like this. Anyway, Arjuna is describing these different doubts. It's important for us to hear Arjuna's doubts and to see also how they apply in our own Krishna consciousness. Arjuna says, Kimbogair, O Govinda, of what avail to us are a kingdom, happiness, or even life itself? 
When all those for whom we may desire them are now arrayed on this battlefield. So Arjuna is, is very pessimistic about the thought of fighting. No, I don't, I don't need a kingdom and I don't worry, I'm not worried about happiness, I don't care about my life. I'm ready to die, I can give up my body any time. So this is Arjuna's thinking. Nihatya dartarasranna kapriti svajjanadana What pleasure can we derive from killing the sons of Dhritarashtra? In other words, there will be no pleasure in just killing the sons of Dhritarashtra. If we're not going to get any pleasure from it, why should we do it? So this is, this is Arjuna's mood in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, before hearing Lord Krishna speak. These are the, some of the doubts of Arjuna. So somebody may be thinking, just simply kill the sons of Dhritarashtra, problems are over. But Arjuna said, no, that, what pleasure will we get from killing these sons? There are relatives, there are family members. Are we going to kill them? Well, they are going to be killed one way or another. Whether Arjuna likes it or not, Krishna said, they're all going to die. Prabhupada explains, everyone wants to show his opulence to friends and relatives. But Arjuna fears that all his relatives and friends will be killed on the battlefield and he will be unable to share his opulence after victory. Maybe you've had the experience yourself. Do you have any, can you think of any examples like this where you're you were unable to share your opulence after victory? Or can you think of an example where you did share your opulence, where you did something and you shared it with your friends and relatives? Yes? Tell me where you shared your opulence with others. In school, we used to share our good results with our friends, family, and feel happy about it. Yes, right. And if you go to college, you can see when people graduate, you know, the family all come and they bring a big bunch of flowers and they give a bunch of flowers maybe to the, the, the graduate and, and this way they congratulate them on their victory, their success. Something like that, yeah? Even, even. One person can speak, please. Uh, I was quoting Prabhuji Maharaj, yeah. uh, after buying home, people could celebrate and uh, let the family participate in their happiness of owning a house. Owning a house. You get, a, get a, a new, you move to a new house or something, you mean? No, all, all these things like grand weddings, uh, Maharaj. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand what you're saying. Uh, grand weddings, Maharaj, which happen, right? To show off their opulences. A wedding? Mm -hmm. Okay. Guru yeah, Maharaj, uh, the first paycheck, like when we first uh, get the first paycheck, then we take it to the temple and we share with the family. The first picture? The first paycheck. Oh, first paycheck. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, uh, I I have a question here. Like I have a thought in my mind. So may I ask it? Yeah. Maharaj, I want to understand that uh, what Srila Prabhupada wants to uh, make us learn here from this statement that everyone wants to show his opponents and Arjuna see, sees that he would not be after the victory. So what can be like personal application understanding for myself from here? Well, we want to understand that we do like to enjoy opulence. And when we do have some opulence, we do like to show it off to other people. That is generally the mood. You know, you get a new car, you want to drive around and show it off to people, you know, this is my new car, you know, something like this. You like to, to, to show off what we have to other people. So Prabhupada wants us to understand how we are inclined to enjoy our opulence and part of the enjoyment comes in just being able to show it to others and letting other people know that we have this thing. Hmm. We want, you know, people just to understand and, or to, to, to let them see our success and our victory, our opulence. We like that other people will think, oh, they're, oh, he's very great, oh, you know, oh, he got this new car, oh, he got this new wife, he got a very beautiful wife or something like this, you know. People, whatever we have, whatever opulence we have, we like to show it off. We do have that, that tendency, we want to show it off to others and let other people see how wonderful and how great I am and how, I'm in, how I have the success. Can you understand, Prabhu? Yes, my Lord. Thank you. Yes, yeah. some other hands are up here. Maharaj, I was uh, kind of compelled to share that uh, modern day social media is all about showing off our opulences. Right, and everybody is uh, glued to Facebook, Instagram, whole day. Someone is showing off uh, something of their opulence. So that really gives pleasure. And we can see how the social media is booming in that way. Yeah. In a certain modern context. From, child, from children to adults, everybody is uh, so attached to social media because that show off gives... So much pleasure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's some some pleasure, some satisfaction in it. And you see that also in in uh, in sporting events. You know, maybe you're competing in some contest and if you win the contest, you know, they will honor you and and people will appreciate, oh, you've done very well like this, oh, you're so great. So Arjuna, his problem was, he was afraid that he may win the battle, but all of his friends and relatives would be killed in the battle. And if... Sorry, for interrupting, actually, Devjit Prabhu was raising hand that time. Okay. So I just wanted to ask, like, uh, uh, like I, uh, I think Prabhupada is not asking us to refrain directly, but uh, what should we, what should, as devotees, we should do? Like, we might get, you know, uh, some kind of achievements at some time, but we shouldn't, we might, we, we might not be in the mood to show up, but devotees might get or other people might get notified of that and they might be congratulating us. And so what, uh, how to understand that point? 
Yeah, well, a devotee will give all the credit to Krishna and to Guru. The devotee will not take any of the credit for himself. So whatever opulence, and whatever victory he may have, he will give the credit to Guru and Krishna, that it is all their blessings. Whatever I have done, whatever I have been able to do, is simply by their mercy on me. Thank you, Mahasi. In this way, a devotee will always remain humble. So Arjuna, his concern was that he won't be able to uh, share the opulence or his victory with other people because all of his relatives and friends would die in the battle. So there would be no, it wouldn't, it, there wouldn't be any satisfaction out of winning the battle and enjoying the opulence. So why should I bother? What's the point in fighting? Why take the trouble? This was, this was Arjuna's foolish thinking in this case. Okay, so Krishna is described as Janardana, the maintainer of all living entities. We have to understand how, how dependent we are on Lord Krishna that whatever we are happen, whatever happens, whatever opulence we have, it's all by the grace of Krishna. Our own efforts are very minimal. We don't have a lot of uh, power in our hands to arrange these things. But Krishna can do everything. Sometimes material world people think they're so, they're maintaining, I'm maintaining my family, I'm doing so much for my family, for my country. But who is actually doing it? Who is actually maintaining everyone? It is simply Lord Krishna. Right? We say, Nityo Nityanam, Chaitananas Chaitananam, Eko Bahunam, Yo Vidati Kaman. That one Supreme Lord is providing the needs of everyone. So that is Lord Krishna, Janardana, the maintainer of all the Janas. Then sinful reactions have to be considered. Papam evashrayad asman. Sin will overcome us if we slay such aggressors. So Arjuna, being a devotee, being a pure-hearted Vaishnava, he's very concerned about sinful reactions. And he does not want that sins should uh, come upon him. And certainly he considers that if we fight, if I'm going to fight against such people, and I'm going to kill people, then certainly I'll get sinful reactions. And this would be very bad. This for a pure-hearted devotee, they're very careful to avoid sin, but taking part in the battle means a lot of sin, a lot of reactions going to come upon them. So Arjuna is he's very much worried about this fact, and he brings it to Krishna. Arjuna's talking about this, first of all, in text 31, Nachashreyo Nupashyami, that no good. I don't see how any good can come from it. And then he says, Papam evashrayad asman, sin will overcome us. So you can see Arjuna's statements. Text 31, he's talking about there's no good in it. Then text 36, he's saying it's sinful. We'll be, I'll have to take so many sinful reactions. So in this way, Arjuna wants to avoid the battle. And then text 36 goes on. Swajanam hi katam hadva sukina shamamadava. O Krishna, husband of the goddess of fortune, how could we be happy by killing our own kinsmen? 
So certainly if you have to kill your own people, it's not very satisfying. You don't feel very good about it. So Arjuna is bringing up these points to Lord Krishna. I'm going to have to kill my own kinsmen. The Kauros, of course, are all kinsmen. They're all the kinsmen. Arjuna and the Pandavas, they're all Kauros as well, and they're going to fight their own people. So how can we be happy killing our own people? Powerful arguments coming from Arjuna. And he wants Lord Krishna who is the husband of the goddess of fortune, to resolve all of these different issues, all of these different doubts. So Lord Krishna is, we heard, Keshava. He is the killer of the, de the, killer of the demon Keshi. So we want to hear how Lord Krishna is going to uh, counter Arjuna's thinking on these different topics. Sorry for interfering. Sudha, Mataji, FaceTime. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, I, I would uh, just want to have some clarification here. Um, actually, uh, as per uh, Shastrik injunctions, if you kill the aggressors, it's, uh, there's nothing wrong in it. But I just would want to understand how come Arjuna thought that if he kills the aggressors, he is going to get sinful reaction. Uh, how, how, why would Arjuna be worried about sinful reactions by killing aggressors? Well, certainly, huh? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Well, certainly, you kill someone. It's a bit, something. It's a very sinful thing to do, isn't it? We have respect for life. Devotees, the Vaishnavas, they have respect for all life. Prabhupada said devotee would hesitate even to kill an insect. So what to speak of killing our own kinsmen, to kill people, certainly there will be some sinful reactions. Nobody can be happy doing these kind of things. Only a, somebody, a very deranged personality would think like that, to want to kill people who are your own family members. No one can want to do that in proper state of mind. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, so here, so which means that the understanding is like uh, Arjuna sees it as his own kinsman rather than uh, aggressors. Yes, the Kurus, they are his own kinsmen. He's been growing up with them. They went to, they were all students of Drona together. Definitely, they were well known to each other because Dhritarashtra became like their, their stepfather. When Pandu died, the Pandavas had no father. Dhritarashtra was like their father, supposed to be. And Grandfather Bhishma, of course, he's there. A Dronacharya, their teacher, certainly Arjuna had so much feeling for all these people who he's going to fight against. So he's very reluctant to fight them because he knows fighting, Kshatriya people fight, they fight to the death. They don't just play with each other, they're going to fight to the end. Either they win the battle or they die on the battlefield. They don't go home defeated. So Arjuna understands the gravity of the situation and he's considering there's no happiness and fighting in this situation. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. That, that helps a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, some more hands are raised. All right, yes. Samraj, yeah, Samraj, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, Arjuna, uh, during Agnatavas, where they were in disguise in the uh, 
Virat Parva it comes that uh, the Kauravas steal the uh, cows and they have a fight. So Arjuna faced, he fought against Kauravas before. At that time, he did not think that they are, own, they are my own family. Uh, how come at this juncture that he is believing? This is arrangement of Lord Krishna. So he could, okay. so he could speak Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna is put into Maya so that Krishna can speak to him. Right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Yes. Uh, Rishikesh Prabhu is saying. Yes. Just a comment here. I think Mataji, Sudhar Mai, Chitra Mataji did ask the question. Just a small comment. The point is, uh, in the translation, the first line says, sin will overcome us if we yeah. slay such aggressors. And such is further described in the purport as, in Arjun's case, however, one should consider the special type of aggressor, namely his own grandfathers, teachers, friends, sons, etc. Because of them, i.e. because of the special case of the special type of aggressors, he said what he said. Hare Krishna, that's all. Okay, yes. Different kinds of aggressors, right? Mm. And uh, I read one uh, doubt actually on what Samraj Mataji was asking, right? Uh, in Ajnata was they were actually fighting, but uh, Arjuna was fighting knowing that they will, uh, he will not kill every one of them. It is just to make sure that he protects the cows and all of Virata, right? Is, is it not marriage? Now, now it is like, uh, as you said, right? He will, he will have to fight for either death or life, actually. Yes. So is it the difference, actually, that, that makes the difference between the fight which he did in Virat uh, Parva and then here? Well, at Bharat, when he fought there with at Bharat, what happened? Yeah, uh, it certainly seems to be different, right? He did fight with them. He defeated them. He didn't kill them. Yeah, it is a it is a fight for victory or defeat. But now it seems to be a fight for death and life, right? Yeah, this is a a very different situation, right? Previously at Virat, he was just simply fighting to defend the 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 prince and the the was it the son of Maharaj Virat and the daughter, he was protecting them. But here, but at Kurukshetra, they're fighting for land to get the kingdom. They want to get some land. They've been denied land, so they have to fight to to win the. To, to get the land which they want, to keep their shat mood, to keep their position as Kshatriyas. Yeah, and that will happen only either, either one party should uh, leave and the other one has to die. Right? Yes, mm, yeah, the, certainly the, the, the gravity of the situation has greatly intensified because they've been in exile for 12, uh, 12 years. They've been through so much. And they're still denied the kingdom, denied any land at all. So it's a, the situation is very bad. And the, the Korus also, they want, they want that the Pandavas should be killed. They've tried to kill the Pandavas on different occasions. So now this is their, their big uh, hope. They want, they want so much that they go to battle and they can fight to death, fight to the death. Previously, Arjuna, at, at Virat, they did not identify Arjuna. He was not identified there because it, he was in incog, incognito there. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Maharaj. And again, uh, Rishikesh Prabhu, you raised your uh, hand. Okay, I, should have, I should have lowered it down, sorry. Uh -huh. oh. Yes, Maharaj, you can thank you, sorry. Uh -huh. So, in relation to Rishikesh's point about different kinds of aggressors, we do get, you know, some kind of aggressors who simply 
want to get economic gain, you know, they want to get something. So someone's an aggressor, he can be killed. If someone does something to you, you know, if you, you take your property and t take, if they take your wife, they mistreat your wife like that, they set fire to your home, they take your wealth, then that's an aggressor and that kind of aggressor can be killed. But that's according to Artha Shastra. And if you, if you consider Dharma Shastra, it's, it's a little different. Dharma Shastra, then it's not like that. Dharma, the religious principles are there. And then the, you don't have to actually kill someone. So the point is there are different kinds of aggressors and different ways to understand how to implement. What, what level of Shastra are you going to act on? Are you going to act on the level of Dharma Shastra or Artha Shastra? If you're acting on the level of Artha Shastra, then uh, that's uh, much more material. You can thinking about the material gain, the material result. But Dharma Shastra is more according to the duty. All right, we'll, we'll go ahead here. We're going to hear about this final reason for Arjuna not fighting. Actually, maybe we'll take a break here, just for five minutes, while well, I remember. All right, we'll have a break for five minutes. Okay, sure, Robert.
Okay, so I'm back with you again. Hare Krishna. Everybody there? Uh, Maharaj, uh, you are on mute, Maharaj, you can speak in the oh. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Maharaj, yes. Okay, thank you. So we'd like to continue. Okay, so we're up to this uh, fourth reason for Arjuna not wanting to fight. And the reason is the destruction of the dynasty. Uh, and we will see how he lists different events which are going to take place, which he considers to be the cause of the fight, the cause of the battle. So Arjuna is bringing out the the wrong in the 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 fight. The the first point which comes up is in text number thirty nine. Can someone read text number thirty nine, please? With the destruction of the dynasty, the eternal family tradition is vanquished, and thus. The rest of the family becomes involved in the religion. Mm. All right. So, the, with the destruction of the the family elders, the the elders who are going to be there in the battle, just like we saw at Kurukshetra, grandfather Bhishma leaving the body, and Drona also. So the different elders. They're going to leave the world, and without the, the presence of the elders, then there's a you get you get problems. You know the the younger people don't have anybody to guide them and to uh, correct them when they're wrong. So the presence of elders is something very important to have senior people around us. It's very helpful for the juniors. We, f we do find uh, a lot of people, you know, they don't like to have the elders, oh, these old people, they're around, oh, they stifle everything. Uh, but the, the presence of elders is also good in, the, in a society or in a community because the elders have the experience and they have also the uh, intelligence to understand what things should be done and what should not be done. So the presence of elders is something which is important in, the, in, in society. So Arjuna was worried with the death of the elders, the family tradition will be given up. So the first reason anyway is given there, the death of the elders, and then after that, then the second reason, with the death of the elders, and the Lord family... Says he, if Maharaj uh, is, uh, if he's ready, then he wants to take initiation. Oh, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, and he has uh, planned after his... But after initiation also he want to do his uh, Bhakti Shastri, he want to go in Mayapur. Oh, really? After his school finish, he said. Mm -hmm. Yes, but did, he's only... Did you do Bhakti Shastri? Me? Yeah, yeah I, I am only listener, Maharaj. Oh. I did not give exam. Because that time I have to, some reason, because of some reason, I have to go in Burma. Oh. Therefore, I, in the beginning, I told them to, I am not going to give exam, but I listen. Okay. I do listen all, yes. You shouldn't give exam. Yes, but that time actually that because of that plan and big problem in Burma because of this internet mm. and maybe I will not able to listen all program oh. therefore. Mm. Yes. <laughs> it's more than one year I think. Yeah. We do that program, yes. Yeah. Nima, I finished.
Yeah, yeah, he do. I think only two make it complete. Huh? Only two. Only if, you two know. or three make it complete. Four. Uh, Atharanu Gopal Prabhu and Nimai and maybe one more from Bangkok. Yeah. In the first, the beginning, it was around 40, more than 40. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because they changed the times also, they were changing things. Yeah. Not easy for people. Then, yeah, this, yeah. then the business started, they had to go to business. Yes. Me and Chandrika Devi listen both. We mm. both listen, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. You can do the exam. Not very difficult. Guru Maharaj. Yes. Okay. Okay, I am going to be Shastri at Mayapur. But I'm finding shlokas so hard. How can can I pass without uh, doing too many shlokas? <laughs> well, you can do what you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's another thing. To upload, the shloka and the assi assignments are good, I think. But shlokas, if you upload it, we can't even do it sometimes. What do you mean you can't do it? We can't upload on the... Uh, on the system, what is it called, Mayapur um, website? It's um, on our, um, um, what is it called? There's a special, um, like, site we get, right, from Mayapur to... Portal, 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 on a portal. What is it? So I wonder, if, I wonder if the shlokas are too big so it doesn't download. Oh, you're not getting the slokas? You're not able to download them? No, I, I, you know what, and then I, I did only like a um, few of them, but, and they want us to do five at one time and then download it, like five slokas with translation and then download. So I think it becomes probably too, too big. Uh -huh. But I'm going to ask them anyway. Yeah, you should ask them. Five slokas, yeah. it's, it's not so much, is it? Yeah, five slokas are not that much, but then I don't know the, how much uh, memory it needs. But I'm going to ask them. Uh, if they could just give you the, the chapter and the verse number, you can find the sloka for yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got all, all the, oh, they give you everything, what, what to do. Yeah. So why do you need to download anything? Yeah, so then it doesn't download itself. Like when I try to like copy it and then put it on my email and then bring it to the desktop and then want to download it, it doesn't download. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. I think that uh, Mataji, the correct word is uh, upload, not download. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 upload, yeah. Upload. Oh, upload. Oh. Yeah, upload is also a problem for me. I was, I made all the videos, but unable to upload. So can someone help me? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, this is Ramya Vrindavan. Oh yeah, I find that difficult. Well, too. if you if you're in Mayapur, you could do it live. You go, you could go to the teacher there in Mayapur and do it. Oh no, I'm in Canada. Oh, you're in Canada. So Maharaj, if I'll be going to Mayapur um, next week, so can I do that in Mayapur? Yeah, you just, you just talk to Ch uh, Chaitanya Hari, who's coordinating okay. this class, and I think he could arrange that. Okay. So, but that would be unit by unit. So, this time it could be unit one, but what about the rest of the units if you're not able to upload it? <laughs> well, I'm sorry to ask so many questions. Yeah, you should, you should. There must be something wrong if you're not able to upload it. Uh, everybody else is uploading. So you should also be able to upload. Okay, so maybe I'll take help from other devotees and see if we can upload. Yeah. Okay, Maharaj, thank you so much. Chaitanya Hari Prabhu is also very expert in computers. 
I can mm. advise you. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Down. Yeah, maybe yes. you're doing something wrong. Just, just if you just talk I'll, to him, he can help you. Yeah, I'll just take my computer to him and yeah, learn from right. him how yeah. to do it. Yeah, so yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All right. So is everyone back now? Is the discussion over? No, Maharaj. Only 19 of us are here back. <laughs> Can you close the mm -hmm. other groups? Just close them back. Close them down. And tell them to come back. Um, okay, Maharaj. I will do that. I also saw that only two group active there. Maharaj, uh, you know what Dan was brought up, Maharaj, I, I had one question for you. Um, you are going to do only Bhagavad Gita or are you going to do all the uh, books with us? Yeah, I'm, I love... I'm just doing the first six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. No, no problem because uh, Guru Maharaj, we want you there, like we want you, we like your way of uh, oh. teaching. Oh. <laughs> please, please stay. It's good for you to hear other people. Anyway, uh, is everyone back now? No, Maharaj. It, Maharaj. <laughs> close, close everything down, bring them back. All right, everyone back now? Yes, I think Maharaj most of the only two, yeah. Oh, is there. All right, and so we would like to have a spokesman from Group 1 tell us what you discussed. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So uh, based on our discussion um, for the appropriate uh, appropriate point right so um, uh, I think uh, 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 women are simple in faith and uh, they are like children right so they are able to, uh, to uh, they will uh, easily uh, be trusting any Right, so um, one of our point is mental and emotional. So um, uh, most of their decision or judgment is actually based on their sentimental and emotional at a particular time. So um, uh, that is the other factor. As also y your voice that, uh, is breaking, Prabhu. Oh, sorry, Maharaj. I think I'm having a bad uh, connection here. So um, yeah. Uh, I think uh, one is uh, uh, simple, uh, like a childish mindset. 
uh, and then uh, uh, the decision is based on sentiment, uh, sentimental and also emotional. Uh, that's how they uh, they make their uh, decision, right? And um, civil protection, right? Uh, and as in the inappropriate application, right? Sometimes. Um, they use this to just hurt the uh, woman, right? Just saying that uh, uh, you're not very intelligent and also uh, uh, service or any other duties that uh, they can do um, or they can also uh, partake, right? So uh, this is an inappropriate. So what is appropriate? <clears throat> So I think um, they, 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 for the appropriate, they gave, uh, gave an example of Draupadi, right? So uh, after losing the, um, uh, the third, right? So she left her hair out and then it uh, also contributed that uh, the, to the war uh, of uh, Kurukshetra uh, because she left her hair and then she said, Need to wash with blood, and then uh, they are very powerful. As, as Matajis are powerful, and also um, in a good way, uh, uh, we have uh, more Matajis than Prabhus in our society. Really? So, uh, yeah. Where? It's very, um, okay. What country are you in? Uh, Maharaj, I'm from Malaysia. Malaysia, you have more women there than men? Uh, usually it's uh, I don't know in India we have much more men more than women, women. <laughs> attending programs <laughs> okay in Mayapur there's a lot more men than women generally it varies all right so you feel sometimes inappropriate is the exploit minimization of the position of women all right let me hear from another group let's hear group number three Hare Krishna, Ramya, Vrindavan, would you like to share yeah. yes uh, Maharaj Hare Krishna, Pranam. Uh, Maharaj we discussed uh, First, we discussed the clarity of the statement, women are very less intelligent. So we discussed, as per what I heard from my Guru Maharaj, is Arunajya Swami, and also from the Shastra, that this is a very Shastric statement, that when Krishna says, Triya Vaisha Tatha Shudra, uh, it seems to be that he is categorizing women <clears throat> with the Vaishas and Shudras who are less intelligent. but uh, women are less intelligent uh, than the men of the respective Varna, I heard. And also, uh, we, when they become devotees, women become devotees, they receive the mercy, knowledge, and empowerment from their guru, and they become knowledgeable and intelligent in regarding the Krishna conscious philosophy. So then they are not considered, they should not be considered as intelligent. But um, we also discussed that what Prabhu had already explained in the previous group that women are simple, they trust easily, so men or other people can exploit them easily. So that is one thing and, you know, minimizing uh, them considering that this is a Shastric statement that women are less intelligent. But at the same time, um, the more appropriate application should be when we consider them that they need more protection. Then it's a proper application just because they're simple. The intel less intelligent person doesn't mean that they should be exploited. They, sh they rather should need more protection. So family, friends, and society should give, should be given more protection and uh, should not undermine them just because they're less intelligent. This is like the summary of what we discussed. 
Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you for that. So generally you feel that uh, uh, once a woman, woman becomes a devotee, then she becomes, and, and she's by the grace of the guru and so on, and by her spiritual practice, then she's intelligent. But that's what, yeah, that's what I heard from my Guru Maharaj. Yes, right. But without coming to Krishna consciousness, then women can be often exploited and abused. All right, thank you. Uh, can we hear from one more group? Group maybe group number six. Yes, Maharaj. And first, this statement, probably we are overlooking on that and we think that uh, thanks to Arjun Keshav Prabhu for reminding that. Here the statement doesn't say less intelligent actually. The statement says women are generally not very intelligent, meaning that intelligence is there and it is not very actually. Meaning it is a comparative thing here. They are already intelligent, but compared to men. So we, what we discussed here is materially and biologically, yes, uh, there could be some differences and uh, researchers may also prove that. And in Puranic uh, references also we have uh, Titi compelling Kashyapa for uh, the birth of Hiranya Kashyapa and Hiranyaksha. And Devahuti herself telling to Kapila Dev that uh, she is not very intelligent. And then we hear of the incidents of Sita Devi, uh, I mean, asking Lakshmana to address Rama's plea. And uh, Draupadi also. Draupadi, Draupadi actually, Prabhupada says, uh, when Ashwatham was about to be punished, she told no. In those purports, Prabhupada says that uh, Draupadi should not have told that. He should be punished. So there also he explains about the intelligence of women and he discusses there in Bhagavatam. So all these references were there and uh, we can uh, come, come to a conclusion and say no, they, they are not uh, intelligent and all. But it is all on material platform. And even on material platform in the modern age, Many times, women are uh, materially more intelligent than many men, actually. That we also, in modern uh, world. So, what we have to think is that we are all souls and uh, on a spiritual platform. And by the grace of uh, poor Vacharyas and Srila Prabhupada, only in bhakti and entrance is given even to a grihastha, as he says in uh, third chapter Krishna. So similarly, women are also given entrance into this uh, Bhakti Yoga as given to other weapons. Because in Bhagavatam also we hear about detachment and uh, knowledge, right? So when we have knowledge, detachment is there. So materially, that is why we have many sannyasis traditionally. Right? So though there are so many ifs and buts, but spiritually and on bhakti platform we consider all matajis and prabhujis same and in many cases on general application and practically every day and, and we see in temples centers everywhere there are more matajis coming for services rather than prabhujis which is evident actually we say that we have worked and everything and more mother not only coming, they are doing, actually doing services. And uh, Prabhuji is usually go to festivals and then enjoy combat mostly. And we have, I mean, there are restrictions. So what, what is, I mean, it is not that what we have and uh, how we use that in Krishna's service, right? Yukta Vairag. So that way, proper understanding is that uh, Matajis are, uh, though materially they may be, not very intelligent, as uh, Chanakya Pandit said, as it is referenced by Srila Prabhupada here. But on spiritual platform and in bhakti, actual application, everything, we are all same. That is how Prabhupada has designed this movement as um, to keep the community and uh, devotees together. Thank you. 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 Thank you
So that is the understanding, Maharaj. So appropriate is to appreciate the position of women in devotional service, is it? Yeah. Yeah, all the services. Okay. On the two things, appropriate uh, understanding of uh, the statement is that we have to appreciate their knowledge and application because knowledge is exhibited by their application. So we have to appreciate the services which they are doing. Even we come to know during Prabhupada's time when Radhyatra was going on, one Mataji was uh, chanting by while making chapatis actually, or puris. She makes one chapati, roll it, and then she completes one mantra. So that much dedication was there uh, from Matajis. And initial days when Pujaris were not there, even Matajis were doing Pujas directly. So th those much, I mean, we had uh, Matajis and have Matajis doing services, which we have to appreciate. That is the appropriate understanding. And inappropriate understanding, I mean, many of them already told, by showing all these uh, deficiencies, we should not minimize them. We should not exploit them, and we should not keep them in dark, actually. We should give them allowance, actually, for everything. That is why, during even their, their three days, not allowed for uh, any other activities in uh, customs, actually, in other uh, customs or something. But in bhakti, they are allowed to chant and read. So that is the allowance given in by Prabhupada and other poor audience. So that much uh, leniency is given here. So appropriate understanding is appreciating the services. Inappropriate understanding is exploiting them using this statement. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Madhush. Uh, uh, any of the uh, other groups? Did, did you have anything you would like to add? Any of the other groups? They have just problems. Thank you so much. I just want to tell what we discussed in our group. So, in our group, there were uh, uh, devotees uh, Marani Mataji, Kishori Rav Mataji, Lalita Mataji, and Prasannatma Mother Prabhu. And uh, so, uh, we what we, uh, we discussed, like Marani Mataji started the discussion where she was, you know, emphasizing how women might be, you know, uh, might have been lacking in uh, in terms of logical thinking compared with uh, men and uh, and also uh, they might be thinking more in, in terms of emotionally and sentimentally taking decisions in that way. And, uh, but I, then I also presented something where, you know, there are two sides of the coin where, uh, uh, like women, the, the, yeah, women have the emotional intelligence I will term is uh, I will describe it as intelligence rather than you know, just emotion, and uh, and men have a good logic uh, uh, like logical intelligence or uh, where uh, they can take think more logically, keeping the emotion aside. But after all, human we both Prabhujis and Matajis, we are all emotional, and after all, we are uh, spirit souls. So we should. Uh, but yeah, and, and another thing is like it's the it's it's the way where. Uh, uh, like Krishna has created us, and uh, the, they have uh, Krishna has given some aspects to uh, to Prabhus and Matajis uh, uh, differently, and they should be and both are needed. It's not like we just you know uh, uh, Prabhus are uh, we, Prabhus may be uh, doing the more essential things in the society, so Prabhus are the main thing. And but yeah, when women are only most of the women in the like are homemakers, so we keep them aside. That's not the way. So, because uh, with the support of the women, we are uh, the men are able to do their duties. So, what the point is that as uh, Radharani is always present with Krishna, uh, and Vish, uh, like, like it's Lakshmi is uh, always present with Vishnu. So, it's like they are the energy should be present with the energetic, and the both then makes sense. And uh, again, I think the devotees have uh, commented that. Uh, with proper education, um, uh, I think uh, women can always, uh, uh, with proper, uh, they can always uh, go above this, uh, uh, this uh, whatever uh, the varna ashram and uh, things. And with, uh, with uh, we can always see examples such as Kunti Maharani, where uh, she, uh, like we, we learn from her about emotional service because uh, because she got that education and she had the proper direction and and also. 
uh, also uh, from and and yeah, she was she was she was she is an example for us how to do devotional service. And uh, yeah, and provided because the the, the properties of Mataji are like they are a little bit fragile, so the uh, the duty of the men are to you know uh, uh, give them give the women protection, give Mataji the protection, and to give them the uh, f uh, freedom to ex uh, to express their minds. And uh, yeah, there might be some limitations at uh, certain points, but yeah, at least the point is that I was trying to make that both are needed. And uh, and uh, and it's, uh, it's it's there's two sides of the coin, and we have to appreciate both of them. Okay, you thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, thank you for that. Okay, we'll just hear a quote here from Prabhupada, uh, talking on this point uh, from Prabhu. London. Rohil Prabhu raised hand. Really? Okay. Sorry, Prabhu, I think we just over it, but I'll just uh, summarize it quickly. So, okay. Maharaj, uh, we were from Group 4. Uh, we had Vilasha Padmanama Prabhuji, Samraja Mataji, Akshayana Prabhuji, and Devi Shishta Radhika Mataji. So, on the appropriateness, uh, I feel uh, that women in this statement means both men and women because the only Purusha is Lord Krishna, who is the Adi Purusha, and we all have his Prakriti. So, in one way, we could uh, interpret this as both men and women are uh, not very intelligent. But moving on, uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Devi Shrishta Mataji you know, gave an example where in, uh, in 9th canto, 14th chapter, 30th verse, Purva, she describes the qualities of a woman and she goes on to say that women are uh, less uh, reliable. But if they take up Vaishnavism, you know, to take up devotion, they are on par with men. Also, women, they are generally uh, of a Vama Sobhava, which is mild and of a gentle nature. And as Hemanta Prabhu, you know, gave example of Ashwatthama when he killed Draupadi's son. Uh, Draupadi uh, was you know, still, uh, she didn't want uh, Ashwatthama to be punished. So that is why, you know, could be, you know, could be one reason why, you know, uh, Shri Prabhupada has given this statement. Uh, so on the inappropriateness, uh, I think this statement could be misused at times, you know, where women, they could be exploited or, you know, to just uh, justi uh, men to justify their point of view, you know, could make use of the statement. So in order to avoid that, we need to understand that uh, it is only when women are protected and, you know, as the previous verses, you know, you had explained, Maharaj, uh, that only when women are protected, the progeny, uh, you know, we'll have a good progeny and, uh, and basically, and basically, uh, it, uh, you know, the previous purpose said that, you know, the, the it will be hellish, it will be like a hellish situation. So women should be safe and uh, protected and then the society will be basically protected. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, and uh, Amrit Maharaj Prabhu. Hare yeah. Krishna, Maharaji, Dhanan yeah. Pranam. Yeah. Uh, so I would like to give a summary in a brief. Uh, so we discussed uh, uh, related uh, appropriate of the statement that women are generally not intelligent. Uh, it's a statistical uh, study, scientific study that the brain of a woman is uh, in a smaller as compared with the brain of men. Uh, so it supports the statement of Janakyam. Uh, however, uh, if the women are brought in in Krishna consciousness or the women are having given some spiritual uh, if women are under the spiritual guidance, they are more intelligent than men, as uh, our, uh, you know, Guru Maharaj says like that. So, women's constitutional position is very important in the society and in the family, because women gives birth to the children, and if the woman is... ...woman is spiritually intelligent, and then she can give the more guidance spiritual guidance to the children because children mostly learns from the woman. So as far as, uh, uh, you know, spiritual society, institutional position is very important and that is to be considered by giving women a proper protections, should be brought in into the spiritual guidance, should be in, inclined towards the spiritual practices, then she can uh, definitely, uh, you know, uh, having you know, the topmost position in the society. Okay, uh, thank you. So some feminist says that, you know, through this, you know, the women are less intelligent or not intelligent. But that that can be proven by giving 
uh, you know, the spiritual understanding, uh, spiritual per se, that women are, you know, are really, you know, intelligent in the society also. Yes, right. Thank you, Maharaj Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Okay, going ahead, here's Prabhupada's quote on text number 40, lecture in London again. He says, Chanakya Pandit says, never trust a politician in women. Of course, when women come to Krishna consciousness, that position is different. We are speaking of ordinary women. Krishna says in another place, Striyo Vaishya Stata Sudra. Right? So in, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna does say that even we be of lower birth, like women, Sudra, Vaishya, still they can attain the supreme destination. So is Krishna speaking about ordinary women? No, of course, they're not ordinary women if they can attain the supreme destination. They're the greatest women. So if, if a woman comes to Krishna consciousness, there's something very special. But generally, women uh, have their problems. From Srimad Bhagavatam, First Canto, third chapter, text number five, purport. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that when the woman becomes unchaste for want of proper protection, there are unwanted children called Varna Sankara. To insult a chaste woman means to bring about disaster in the duration of life. So, Draupadi, being a perfectly chaste lady, she, because she was insulted, it meant disaster for those men who were all involved in trying to disgrace her. So, you can see the result of a, a chaste woman. When the woman is chaste, then she's protected. But the problem in the modern society is the men are degraded and the women follow the men. They're all degraded, all drunkards and fond of intoxication and so proud. And so we do want to try to purify the world and help them to understand what is actually good qualities, what qualities are really necessary, and bring about a better society in the face of the world. So we ask the question now, why did Lord Krishna, who is all-loving, incite Arjuna to war? Anyone like to answer this? Anyone like to try to answer this? Yes, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Okay, go ahead, Maharaji. Um, Hare Krishna Prabhu Pranam. Uh, once uh, in a lecture, Srila Prabhupada said uh, that uh, devotees are very merciful in nature and Krishna also very merciful. And sometimes devotees uh, don't want to fight, but those who insult a devotee, Krishna never excuse them. Krishna will never excuse anyone who insult a devotee. So therefore we find in Bhagavad Gita that Arjun became compassionate, but Krishna always, uh, uh, you know, uh, told uh, Arjuna to fight because Krishna never wanted uh, the irreligious people to be on the throne. So that is my point. And Prabhupada also gave this uh, quotation. Okay. Krishna didn't want the irreligious people to rule the world, to be on the throne. So that's one reason. Someone else yeah. like to give another reason? Uh, Maharaj, can I do it? Okay, go ahead. Okay, Maharaj, um, I think one of the reasons is because Krishna was soft-hearted. He was very intelligent. He knew everything, all right? But because he was soft-hearted, that's why Krishna chose him. Hare Krishna. Krishna chose Arjuna because he was, Ar Krishna was soft-hearted. No, Arjuna was soft-hearted. Oh, Arjuna was soft-hearted. So Krishna has to inspire Arjuna to become a bit more hard-hearted, is it? Um, he inspired him to do the right thing. What was the right thing? 
to kill uh, everybody because they were already killed okay. by by Krishna, right? He wanted them, um, mm. like Arjuna, to fight in the war. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Krishna wants to in, to bring Arjuna out of the the bodily concept of life. Is it to come more? Yes, and, Maharaj. yes, Maharaj. And to appreciate more his duty as a kshatriya to establish religiosity. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, that was devotees to raise hands so that uh, yeah. we can avoid multiple uh, devotees speaking at the same time, okay? I'm muting and then I'm actually on my screen, whatever I screen, see I'm asking. Ramya Vrindavan Mataji, you can go. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my devotees um, I understood that Arjuna is uh, not only a devotee, but also a friend of Krishna. And Krishna considered Arjuna to be the most qualified recipient of Bhagavad Gita, which he was about to speak. But uh, for that, why he would why he would ask Arjuna to uh, inside a war is, in my understanding, that war the battlefield is a place where people are about to face the standing in between life and death it's a very crucial moment when everybody is um, more receptive more uh, tense but everybody was attentive in what krishna was going to speak so he being a there are two reasons one is being a bhakta vatsala he already had killed uh, everybody, as another devotee said, he had already killed. It was just a matter of time before Arjuna would physically kill their bodies after Draupadi's disgrace. So, <clears throat> as a Bhaktavatsala, he wanted you to um, punish the Kauravas and those who were uh, those who were participating in the disgrace of Draupadi. And the second reason is he chose Arjuna because he was the Perfect. He wanted to do the two things together. He wanted to speak Bhagavad Gita at the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Why did he choose Arjuna? Because he was the most qualified recipient as a friend, as a devotee of Krishna. Okay. Now, the first reason is very good. Yeah, you've got the point that Krishna was certainly concerned that Draupadi had been abused and action had to be taken against those people. Uh, we'll, we'll just show you what Prabhupada had to say on this matter. Hmm. Prabhupada talks about this in a lecture in London on verses 26 and 27. Prabhupada said, The other side, Duryodhan, why he did not think in that way? Why Arjuna is thinking? Because he is devotee. That is a difference. A devotee thinks like that. A devotee does not like to kill anyone, even an ant. So many atrocities were done to him. Still, when the question of killing came, he was not very happy. No, this is Vaishnava. He is ready to excuse the greatest enemy. The devotee of the Lord does not retaliate against the wrongdoer, but the Lord does not tolerate any mischief done to the devotee by the miscreants. The Lord can excuse a person on his own account, but he excuses no one who has done harm to his devotees. Therefore, the Lord was determined to kill the miscreants, although Arjuna wanted to excuse them. That's from the purport of text number 35. So Prabhupada is saying how Krishna wants them to be punished. Krishna can excuse a person who offends him, but he cannot excuse someone who offends his devotee. The devotees are like at the lotus feet of Krishna. So we give the example, we can tolerate the sun on our head, but we cannot tolerate the sun on our feet, the heat of the sun on the feet. The feet are very sensitive to the heat 
although the head may tolerate it. So Krishna can tolerate devotees offended, he can to tolerate the demons being nasty and offensive to him. But when they offend his devotees, then Krishna wants to take action. And he arranged Arjuna to kill them. And Prabhupada said, Arjuna wanted to excuse them, but Krishna would not allow that. If you insult his devotee, the devotee may excuse, but Krishna will not excuse. This is Krishna's position. Therefore, be careful to insult a devotee. A devotee may excuse you, but Krishna will not excuse you. Krishna is so strict, he cannot tolerate any insult to his devotee. Therefore, this arrangement of fighting Arjuna wanted. No, let them be excused. Krishna wanted, no, you must fight, you must kill them. Prabhupada's lecture on chapter 1, text 26 and 27. All right, so Prabhupada's explaining Krishna cannot tolerate offenses against his devotees. Okay. Srila Prabhupada's purport here. Someone like to read this for us? But a few devotees are actually waiting on to share their points, I guess, on the question. Okay, we'll take it later. Let's finish this first. Okay. Um, Okay, let me read Maharaj then. Srila Prabhupada's purpose. One has to take birth according to one's activities of life. And after finishing one term of activities, one has to die to take birth for the next. In this way, one is going through one cycle of birth and death after another without liberation. This cycle of birth and death does not, however, support unnecessary murder, slaughter and war. But at the same time, violence and war are inevitable factors in human society for keeping law and order. The battle of Kurukshetra, being the will of Supreme, was an inevitable event and to fight for the right cause is the duty of a Kshatriya. Why should Arjuna be afraid of or aggrieved at the death of his relatives since he was discharging his proper duty? He did not deserve to break the law, thereby becoming subjected to the reactions of sinful acts, of which he was so afraid. By avoiding the discharge of his proper duty, he would not be able to stop the death of his relatives and he would be degraded due to his selection of the wrong path of action. 2.27 purpose. Yes, right. Okay, so uh, Bhagavad Gita text 46. Huh? Someone can read this text 46 on the screen. Arjuna cast aside. Sorry. Arjuna puts aside his bow and arrow. Arjuna cast aside his bow and arrows and down on the chariot, his mind overwhelmed with grief. All right, so that's a, con it's a situation at the end of the first chapter. Prabhupada explains from the introduction. Being an associate of Lord Krishna, Arjuna was above all ignorance, but Arjuna was put into ignorance on the battlefield of Kurukshetra just to question Lord Krishna about the problems of life so that the Lord could explain them for the benefit of future generations of human beings and chalk out the plan of life. Then man could act accordingly and perfect the mission of human life. So this is why Arjuna was put into this ignorance to arrange the speaking of Bhagavad Gita. All right, so just here's the conclusion of the first chapter. From the first chapter is concluded that inquiry about the self or Atman takes place in a person who is compassionate in nature 
and non-violent and not in one who is cruel and violent. This is conclusion from Baladeva Vidya Bhusan, one of the great Acharyas in our line. All right, so now we have some questions, is it? Before we look at the objectives, we'll take somebody has questions or comments. Siddhama and Mataji, you have raised your hand. Yes, Maharaj. Just uh, to add on the points to which devotees had shared, uh, why Krishna was uh, chosen, uh, uh, I mean, why Arjuna was chosen uh, to fight the battle of Kurukshetra? Uh, one, actually, um, Krishna had already killed everybody, but still he wanted to give that credit to to his devotee, and which is why he was uh, actually uh, 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 trying to convince Arjuna to take up uh, to that and uh, to fight the war. Uh, so that is that is my uh, thought, Maharaj. Thank you. Yes, I mean we could say, well, Krishna could have taken the more. Is more concerned that Bhima fight. You know, Bhima was the one who took the vow to kill all the sons of Dhritarashtra. Uh, Arjuna hadn't, he had not made any vows like that. It was Bhima who had made the vow to kill everyone. But still, Lord Krishna wants Arjuna to take part in the battle. He certainly wants him to show, uh, he wants Arjuna to hear the Bhagavad Gita and and after hearing the Bhagavad Gita, then Arjuna acts. And so, as you say, Krishna wants the glory, the credit to go to his devotee. Krishna likes to glorify his devotee, and Arjuna is certainly one of his very intimate devotees. Okay, thank you. Jayavadeva Prabhu. Thank you so much. I think you covered all the points. I just want to like to add, like, uh, like, people say that Krishna wanted to start a fight and Bhagavad Gita is not a good book. It's asking everyone to fight. But actually, Krishna, before starting this war, <clears throat> actually tried to do a peace offering yeah, with the four of us. And, uh, yeah, the actual thing, if you see Mahabharata, so, even because Ma Duryodhan was not willing to give even the five villages to Pandavas, so... If, if like after even after all the uh, misdoings and all these things, so that's why yeah the final thing, as we can understand yeah we need to now un, uh, like fight and uh, like um, uh, remove the all the dharma which is going on. So yeah, we, that's another thing like why Arjuna needs to fight. And he needs to fight to remove all the adharmas. Yes. Yes, to establish what is the real dharma, right? Okay, thank you, Prabhu. And uh, my one point, actually, it would be very uh, a side point, actually, I mean, a side effect of what was, <coughs> why Krishna was asking. Though Duryodhana was not as uh, demoniac as Kamsa was, because he was not killing brahmanas or cows or something, so the point is that he wanted a devotee to be a king, not others. So Duryodhana was not a devotee. The entire point is that Duryodhana is not a devotee of Krishna, but Yudhishthira is. So that is why Krishna wanted to have him enthroned as king. That is also one point. Okay. Yes, to establish the Pandavas, that, that Maharaj Yudhisthira should rule the kingdom. He doesn't want Duryodhana to be there. He's not a devotee. He's not the good representative to be the head of the state. Although actually he was doing a good job as a ruler. He was doing a good job. It wasn't like he was exploiting the kingdom or anything. He was actually good. But he just wasn't a devotee. And Lord Krishna wanted to establish the devotee. All right, are there any other hands up? No, Maharaj, not. All right, so we summarized the Bhagavad Gita, right? We heard Dhritarashtra's doubt, and then our, our Duryodhana's diplomacy, and then signs of victory for the Pandavas, and then the different reasons. Oh, oh then we had, oh, Lord Krishna controlled by Arjuna, 
Lord Krishna is Bhaktavatsala, and then we had the four reasons.